Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the KinoCast, the weekly uh, movie review podcast. You know, Oki and I have come out with, this is probably what, number 130 or something Every like that? Every week for like the past two years, yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been really hard at it. You know, we've been, we've been doing a lot of these KinoCasts. You know, if you guys, I mean, if this is your, what, 11th KinoCast, and that means you just haven't been paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, so today we're talking about American Psycho and we're joined by our friend Lofty here. What's going hey, on? Nice to meet you. And hey, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so I just, you know, obviously I'm coming out with a video or by the time this is out, I came out with a video on American Psycho. American Psycho takes place around Christmas time. It's a popular movie. It's a fun film, you know, funny movie. It's good to talk about. Gets the noggin jogging in a lot of ways. Uh, so I figured we just get together and talk about this. So without further ado, uh, I'll start with Lofty and then we'll go to Oki. Lofty, has there been any point in your life where you've acted exactly like Patrick Bateman? Uh, I have put like residue on my face and peeled it off uh, once or twice. Did it feel good? Um, it feels great. <laughs> it feels really good. Uh, aside from that, I don't think I, I don't think I did any, I don't think I committed any kind of violent acts against anyone, but yeah, don't remember. Although he doesn't remember either, right? No, it, it's, Maybe. It, he remembers, but we're not sure <laughs> if he did right. them or not. That's true. That's correct. That's yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, yeah. have you ever done this? Um, there was like this soap that I had and I would only use it every now, like once in a blue moon for like a really kind of deep, you know, cleanse. And it would basically yep. like take off the upper layer of my skin. I'd be kind of red and like, uh, um, you know, sort of uh, sensitive after that. But then like the next day it was like, I had like whole new skin, right? It was like, Oh wow. <laughs> like I felt so good actually the next day, like mm -hmm. everything was new and it was clean. Like, um, have you ever done anything like that? Yeah, but I, I stuff like that I, I get I do for a little while and then I give up. I'm just not com a committed person. That's just how, how I am about everything. Yeah, I yeah. gave I, I gave that up after a uh, a little bit. Like when I ran out, I just didn't <laughs> just didn't bother to yeah. anymore. Um, but yeah. what about you, Oki? Has there ever been a moment in your life where you acted like Patrick Bateman? Well, you see, every time I'm, I'm like in the club, I uh, talk to women and I say um, that, yeah, I work in uh, uh, murders and um, executions. Execution. executions, but I mean murders and, uh, and mergers and acquisitions, acquisitions. Yeah, um, you know, um, I it's I, I'm very much similar to that where when I'm at the club and the uh, bartender tells me that my coupon doesn't work anymore and I have to pay cash. I frequently will tell the bartender, you're a fucking ugly bitch. I want to stab you to death and play around in your blood. <laughs> I mean, I fucking love that scene. <laughs> oh, my God. That scene, that too. Is, that might be the best scene of the movie. It's a throwaway. It is. Of. It's a throwaway near the beginning. It's just kind of showing it's yeah. going through like a day or night in his life. Yeah. The first He's having dinner at the one place. It's kind of like this pinkish sort of like gaudy restaurant with his friends. They go out to the club. At the club, they're playing uh, True Faith by um, New Order, by the way, which is an amazing song. Actually, that was my like Spotify or Apple Music. I, I use Apple Music. It was my most played song of last year. <laughs> True Faith no by New way. Order. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, my most... Was that because you were just listening to it because you do a lot of videos about the subject? or No, I just love New Order. I just listen no, to okay. a lot of New Order. Yeah. You ever seen a 24-hour party, people? No. No. Oh, that's... Yep. um, That, like... Uh, it starts with um, Joy Division, and then it shows, like, New Order, like, how that formed and shit. It's um Steve, Steve Coogan movie. Um, oh, okay. About Manchester, like, the rock scene back then. That sounds like cool. The 70s. Very good movie. Yeah, well, it was Joy Division and then New Order. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, and, 
you know, like the 80s music. I, I definitely have been listening more to like 80s music, you know, for the last yeah. month or so. Just getting into the whole American Psycho vibe. Uh, also mm-hmm. listening to a lot of Depeche Mode. Oh, um, okay. I actually I'm, have an yeah. 80s playlist on my Spotify. No, no, I'm sorry. I have a, like a nostalgic playlist. A lot of it's 80. Well, I, you know, so I have like David Bowie. I have uh, Modern Talking, Spandu Ballet, um, Cranberries, oh, some older stuff like Mamas and the Papas. Uh, but The Cars is probably my most played album. Or the band, Cars was basically the like Weezer yep. of the 70s and 80s. It, yes, it was the Weezer of the <laughs> yeah. 70s. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, Very I mean, weird people. Yeah. Bro, have you ever seen any documentaries with about them? The funny no. thing about that era, that era is like documentary, like um, home video cameras were so new at the time mm-hmm. that, um, like, pe- like the yeah, I'm talking about this cars documentary I watched. They they people didn't know how to act on camera because they've never done it before. Yeah. So, so they're just they're just stupid. They're very immature and they don't know what they're doing. Um, and they're you know what I mean. It's yeah, it was it very sense. weird. They're just discovering, like, whoa, what, what? There's a camera pointing at me. Uh, I'm gonna act like a five year old. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was very interesting. You know, Rick Ocasek, yeah. after the Cars uh, stopped <clears throat> making music, Rick Ocasek went into producing. He produced a lot of records, but he was like one of the biggest producers for Weezer. If I, 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 I think I'm correct wow. in that, he produced a lot of Weezer albums. That's crazy. So it, it kind of makes Ooh. sense, you know. It it makes sense yeah. the passing of the torch in a sense. Um, what were you gonna say, Oki? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I was gonna say like in regards to the um, like the early video camera stuff, like um, yep. it, it felt very much like um, like if you watch those videos, it, it feels like they're like want to say like hi mom, like I'm on TV yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of funny that you know um, you point a camera at like two women and. Sabrina just stares at it and she doesn't eat it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know That's these these correct. stupid women don't know what to do. Sabrina, <laughs> don't just stare at it. Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You know, it's uh they, have you ever figured out how Christian Bale put um was was comfortable enough to be in character like that around women? Has he ever talked about that? Yeah, yeah, he's talked about he's it. He's professional. He's right. talked about. I know yeah. he's. Had, I know he. I know he said that he thinks the movie is hysterical. He's actually has like a twisted sense of humor. I mean, we all do. But so I, I like that about him. I like that he gets the. You know, he was in it, so I hope. I hope he gets it. But like, I've never heard him talk about like his performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's talked about his performance, um, and in an old interview, <clears throat> and uh, uh, what he Based said on that, like Tom Cruise, right? Too. Yeah, so, but it's it's pretty interesting. He said that there was no shadow over him while doing, you know, Patrick Bateman. That like, when he was, you know, in a movie like The Machinist, it was it was more difficult or like it was a darker role. Yeah. Um, that Patrick Bateman, he says, you know, he's essentially this hollow person, and everything yeah. he's doing in real life is a performance, and that performance, that sort of put on that he he does, that kind of. Uh, this his affect is based off of Tom Cruise, which is really interesting because um, in the book, Tom Cruise lives in the same apartment building as or as Patrick Bateman, and there is a section in the book where they run into each other in the elevator. Um, oh, yeah, that sounds- and uh, so it just wow. it's it's kind of fitting, it's kind of poetic. Um, that the affect that Christian Bale should choose is based off of Tom Cruise. Uh, but yeah, that's, um, he's, he said that it's like you're playing this like blank slate that is always performing and always performing for the scene. You know, so you think about the different scenes he's in. He's trying to be Tom Cruise, risky business kind of guy, you know, cocktail or Top Gun, like the cool guy, right? Of course, that starts to More. fall apart near the end. But, there's yeah. also other parts of the movie where he's playing different characters. So he's playing Leatherface um, when he has the chainsaw. He, you know, and he's kind of imagining himself as the as Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's he's imagine like he's imagining himself as like the the horror villain in this movie. Um, in this scene with the threesome, he's playing the 
the the, the porn star. You know, he's right. um, he, he's playing that character, which is definitely not Tom Cruise. You can kind of see the Tom Cruise isms with like the pointing at you know the whole pointing thing. Um, Mm -hmm. but that is definitely like, like, like masculine sort of macho porn star that he's playing. And then, um, when he's like running through the streets, you know, doing the gunfight, it's kind of like he's, I don't know, a Bruce Willis or Mel Gibson type action, action star. But of course that, you know, during that sequence, it really falls apart, but he's kind of, as Christian Bale said, it wasn't actually that difficult. It wasn't that draining on him because he was playing a performer. So it was kind of like there was this this level of like um disconnect between him and Patrick Bateman. Um that's interesting. I, I cuz I know Tom Cruise in in real life when he's not acting is also performing. Um that's just how I perceive Tom Cruise's like persona. Yeah. It's always like you know what I mean? Like he's always kind of um he's always in character or not in character, but he's always um performing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For something. For yeah, I've heard, I've heard stories. I've heard some stories from people who've met him. Well, so is a lot of people in Hollywood, by the way. I've, um, I know firsthand and for secondhand information from uh, about uh, Robin Williams. People who I know who have worked on the set with him say that they very similar stuff about him, where he's just he, even when the camera's off, when there's like a lunch break, and people are just gathering, you know, get, getting their sandwiches. He is performing for people, and he won't shut up. He just, <laughs> they say he's the most annoying human being ever. Well, but he's also really endearing and, like, you know. I I, I guess all the yeah. Family Guy jokes at his expense were uh, justified then. <laughs> yes, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I liked, I like uh, Robin Williams. I just kind of feel bad for his, what he, his mental state a little bit. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Anyways, Oki, uh. You're uh, just listening here. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I was about I'm to say I'm um, sorry. Tom Cruise, a uh, lot of gay allegations that he sued out of existence. There's like <laughs> oh, three yeah. of them in a row. John Travolta, too. Oh, no. John Travolta is like he's he's just like it's clear. Like there's pictures of him like kissing <laughs> dudes. <laughs> hey, no. He John Travolta. Harder. Greece taught me that John Travolta is the manliest man, very straight. There's no well, yeah. way John Travolta be, could be gay. Come on, he was in Greece and Saturday Night Fever, <laughs> two of the most macho movies ever made. <laughs> Saturday, Night, Saturday Night Fever, though, that is actually like fucking dark movie. Yeah. Like it, <laughs> other than other than like the dancing, it's it's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I remember, well, I, I remember thinking, I remember I was a teenager and I was thinking it was just going to be a movie about disco dancers. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched yeah, it no, since. I got to, like, I got to revisit like, it. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> fucking, there's like, uh, should I just spoil Saturday Night Fever? Is that fine? Everybody's seen it. Every, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's suicides. There's rape. There's, <laughs> there's all these, they're like, they're all racist. Like they're straight up, like saying that, like calling people edwards on the street and shit and calling women like you know <laughs> c-words and shit like they they're just yeah it's uh it's a dark dark ass movie yeah well john travolta redeemed himself in phenomenon uh where he was a good guy i like phenomenon That's a, <laughs> I, I actually mean, enjoy that movie i mean yeah. it's kind of a it's kind of a goofy movie, though. Like, he gets the tumor in his, the brain tumor. and he, Well, that's revealed at the end. But the thing that's cool is, like, the buildup. Like, it's like, oh, shit, this, this ordinary guy is, like, really smart. And now, like, yeah. after fucking fainting, and then he could do magic. And it, like, goes on. <laughs> yeah. for, like, an hour like that, and it, like, kind of builds up. And that's a, that's a good-ass movie. Phenomenal. I like that movie. I just, I just like how Travolta is supposed to be, like, a, a high school kid <laughs> in Greece. <laughs> oh yeah it's just like, no, no. it reminds me a little bit do you watch jojo's <laughs> bizarre adventure no i'm not a weed oh uh, well, i watched I the <laughs> first season of it uh, well they're supposed to be high school kids at least joe Turo in part three and he's like the size of arnold schwarzenegger like it's so funny no actually uh, the thing great. that got me about greece was the fact that it's supposed to be in the midwest yet they right. like their drag race is in the la river it's so obviously oh, yeah. the L.A. River, too. 
And I'm like, oh my God, this is just LA. I mean, but they did the same thing, right? In Nightmare on Elm Street. Isn't that supposed to be like in the Midwest? And then they're walking around and there's like palm trees and shit everywhere. <laughs> and you're like, this isn't, this isn't where they say it is, is it? <laughs> At least right. in Halloween, they really tried to, Halloween and Donnie Darko, they really tried to make it look like it wasn't Southern California. Right. You know? Um, so the yeah, original Halloween was so good. I'm I'm really disappointed by the remakes. I I gave up. I di didn't even watch Halloween. No, ends. Ha Halloween ends was based. <laughs> no, Halloween ends was Why? great. It was <laughs> awesome. It's basically like uh, it's totally not even about Michael Myers. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing. Halloween ends kind of feels like it was a different script that got put into the Halloween franchise. And it's kind of Heathers-esque. Um, mm. And it's very much like, uh, uh, it's Heathers-esque, it's sort of jokery. It's basically about wow. a kid who, I I will you know say he looks a lot like me. <laughs> it's about a kid who accidentally oh. kills a, a, a child. And honestly, <laughs> In the movie, it's the child's fault for dying, right? The child, like, <laughs> I just want to say, if you watch the scene, you're like, no, 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 that 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 child did that to himself. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't Corey Cunningham that did it. Anyways, Corey then becomes like the uh, sort of, you know, the hated the pariah, right, in the community, and yeah. it's about sort of this pariah status, and he's getting like. He's getting bullied. He's getting beaten up, you know, and everything. Like, he can't go anywhere, uh, blah, blah, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone basically takes all the hate they had for Michael Myers and puts it onto him. And it turns him basically into the new Michael Myers. Um, wow. And he starts, uh, he starts killing some folks, let me say. And he starts killing the folks that deserve it. And uh, so it's kind of an indie sort of... It's like it's like an indie uh, <clears throat> character study on uh, a canceled, like someone who's been essentially canceled for something that really was out of their yeah. control. And That's an I, interesting I think that day twist. <laughs> I think it makes it a lot more interesting. Yeah. The Michael Myers stuff is very kind of subdued in the film. There's not a lot of it. The only thing is, it's like there's an ending, and then it's so obvious that the studio then was like. Okay, you got to put this other 10 minutes of like Michael Myers, like Michael Myers fight in here to like justify this. Cause otherwise, it's like it, Michael Myers is like more of like a symbol of his own hate and aggression and kind of the turning over to evil. It, he isn't so much a character, you know? Um, yeah. And then there was obviously like this kind of tacked on studio ending. So um, that like that took away from it, but I still, but. The thing is that the people who hated the movie liked the, the, the Michael Myers stuff it, as far as, you know, I, I was reading and stuff like that. They hated the stuff that wasn't Michael Myers because they thought that they were going into a movie that was going to be about um, Michael Myers standoff with Laurie Strode. And they wanted some like 90 minute, I guess, epic standoff. But it's kind of like, you know, after the first Halloween or I don't know, after the first Halloween like Michael Myers should have just been like set aside, you know. I like yeah. the fact that they go, no, we're gonna do a new guy. It's gonna be Corey. Michael's just gonna be here, kind of in the shadows, kind of on, you know, taking the back seat on this one. I like that. I think that more Halloween movies should be like that, um, you know. And mm. everyone talks about like decades later about how great Season of the Witch is, Halloween three. I personally did not care for Season of the Witch. Not because it doesn't have Michael Myers in it, but because I just personally don't care for it. Um, I have my own issues with the film. But a lot of people are like, no, wasn't it so great that like Michael Myers wasn't in this one? And the same people that say that, that Halloween's great for not having Michael Myers are complaining that there's not enough Michael Myers in this, in this do you, one. Do you, think, do you think the original Halloween is overrated? The first one? No, I don't, because I think it's also fairly yeah. culturally significant. Like, you have to... Yeah. When it came out, you know, it scared people. Like, really big-time scared people. Um, yeah. For its time, it was really scary. And I, 
And, um, you know, because like this is late 70s, right? This is like height yeah. of the slasher or not slasher era because Halloween kind of made slashers really mainstream. There were slashers before, of course, there was Jallo in Italy, um, which are kind of like proto slashers, you know, like a lot of the early Dario Argento movies, like you could easily yeah. like Deep Red and um, uh, uh, Deep Red and some of the, the Fulci films and uh, uh, Blood and Black Lace. Uh, that's a... Uh, who did Blood and Black Lace? The, uh, uh, Italian Mar films? Mario Mario Bava. Yeah, yeah. So okay, it's like okay, all these yeah. like Italian Jallo movies. They kind of, you know, they were sort of like the proto slashers. The Jallos were, you know. Then you had Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but then Halloween really, I think, made it super mainstream. And the the thing to also think about Halloween is that all the, um, all the. Uh, uh, victims were essentially underage. Right. They were 16, 17. So it kind of, uh, you know, went after this fear, these fears of, um, uh, kids getting killed. It went after fears of, uh, you know, the serial killer thing was huge back then. This is like when Ted Bundy. Right. Was, you know, big, like big in the news. There were some tons of serial killers that like, the satanic panic was happening, but the serial killer thing, it's kind of like how mass shooters, you know, are sort of an existential fear in society yeah. now, you know, serial killers were that existential fear back then. So it was kind of tapping into that fear and it was like happening in this like really nice neighborhood happening to these like upstanding, maybe not quite upstanding kids, but regular kids, kids who surely didn't really do anything wrong. Um, and were killed for no reason. And the person that was killing them was somebody that just couldn't be stopped. And it's told in, um, when you listen to John Carpenter talk about making the movie, it's really interesting hearing him talk about how the movie is. And, uh, he references, I think Hitchcock more than anybody else. And if you watch the movie, yeah, that makes sense. yeah it really feels like a low budget Hitchcock film. Yeah. But more violent, because <laughs> Hitchcock was cucked by Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. it was yeah, yeah, but yeah. not that much more violent. Not oh. that much more violent. Well, yeah, that's true. A lot of, uh, and especially yeah. in, the, in the first Halloween, a lot of, if not most of the violence is, is like, um, uh, more implied than anything else. And it is so I, funny. I think even implied violence, right, in the fifties was like kind of a no-no. And like no, there's even in the early sixties. There's plenty of implied violence in the even since in the thirties, forties, and fifties. I mean, you had westerns with people shooting each other. You had all yeah. the noirs with them stabbing people. There was plenty well, of implied what the, violence. What was the Hayes? What was the Hayes Code then? That was just um, Hayes Code was um, so there was there was so Hayes Code definitely um, tackled violence. So you, there wasn't like graphic yeah. violence. A lot of it was more implied violence. Uh, so implied violence was very popular or like kind of like bloodless okay, that's why okay, you had like okay. the westerns where you would just see the guy like grab his his gut and then like fall down you know when getting shot right haze code was definitely more um attacking uh sexuality and media and attacking miscegenation uh, miscegenation that was one yeah. thing and sexuality you know depictions of sex and drugs basically right um so they were definitely more uh but they're, they're definitely more concerned with that um, than with violence, but violence yeah. was a part of it, but it wasn't like, the thing is, is that Westerns were, you know, Westerns and action movies were already like so ingrained in pop culture. You, you just couldn't get rid of violence in movies. Right. I just keep hearing about Hitchcock and how he, he was kind of, uh, handicapped by. Oh no, he definitely stuff. was. He definitely he was. He definitely yeah. was. But I think that like the preferred thing back then would have been implied violence. I think they were also they were way more worried about like communists working in hollywood and like you know right right yeah excising them than they were about like you know in something implied well they with would john be happy carpenter i'm i'm the reason why i asked the question if, if it's Halloween overrated is because i actually it's my it's one of my least favorite john carpenter movies but maybe that's just um a personal thing with me i don't know what do you guys think i'd say it's um, one of my favorite of his movies I oh, think really? it's I okay. think it's one of his tightest scripts. 
as well as has some of his best cinematography, like especially considering its budget and everything. Mm -hmm. I I just yeah. for something about like the fog um, in the mouth of madness, uh, the thing. I now I I am not an assault on precinct thirteen fan. Maybe that's my least favorite, but maybe that's also controversial. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a cool movie. I just, so, you know what? I I, I much been, prefer I that to Holly Halloween or like any like thing that like turned into a franchise because it's it's almost similar to music where it's very like overplayed. Yeah, and it's so prominent, just and I just terrible acting. I kind of have acting. a like a like terrible a version. Writing. Yeah, like uh, I, dude, I don't even remember. I I saw Halloween maybe like the first one maybe once, and it was like years ago. So I don't even remember like the script or any or the quality of the movie it's just like you know. well assault on precinct precinct 13 is just not a believable movie in my opinion it's, it's oh very oh no strange. that it's, oh no yeah that movie's fun is, that is so much fun though like no, it's just like it's, it's, it. okay you guys want to know you guys want to know an actual okay. underrated carpenter movie is vampires okay vampires is underrated <laughs> <laughs> is that his 90s like throwaway movie yeah with james um, woods yeah, yeah, yeah. James Woods is the vampire hunter, and it's like over the top, and it's stupid, and it's goofy, and it's paced terribly, but I love it. <laughs> I like it because my dad liked it. Other than that, it's very yeah. I watched. Great movie, I, I, grew, yeah, I grew up watching yeah. it with my dad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's one yeah. of those dad movies that, like, oh, it comes on <laughs> AMC or something like that. You know, when you're flipping the channels, and then my dad's like, oh. This is a good one. <laughs> you're, uh, you're like, well, well it's I, obviously not good, it's, but it's fun. Right, right. It's something he grew up with, and he just thinks it's great. So you just, he, you know, you tolerate his taste. But I, I, I want to say, are you guys prefer Carpenter, or are you more of a Cronenberg fan? I know this is some. I've had this conversation before with people. I'm just curious what you guys think. I'm not a fan of anything. I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. I just it, consider I, I, those I, two guys kind of like I, like I more I more take yeah. it movie by movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm a fan of directors though, actually. Yeah, I'm yeah. a fan I, of both I, Carpenter I, and Cronenberg. I don't want to say one like I prefer one over the other. Though, like I, I like just, both of them. Yeah, maybe I'm brainwashed, but I spent a lot of time on in like when in my early twenties on like film forums, and everybody was kind of approaching cinema through like the auteur theory and we were all so like that's kind of how i don't know like uh so directors to me kind of i just, I just kind of where my brain i feel like goes i feel like it's whenever I think um, of a movie yeah i feel like less like a tour theory kind of thing more so like xbox versus uh the playstation right. kind of mentality <laughs> Yeah, Xbox for the win because Xbox has Xbox has high in life, which is the new Justin Roiland video game. <laughs> um, anyways, um, yeah, no, I, yeah. I I tend not to even like think about that stuff. Like, really, I don't put that much mental effort into those sort of questions. Just like how I will never put any mental effort in the question of what I've had a lot of people. Okay, so I've had a lot of people. DM me on various socials, people, you know, low follower accounts yeah. or whatever, like Anon accounts, um, asking me to make a video talking about the difference between Kino, film, movies, flicks. Uh, that's stupid. And I'm like, yeah. no, that's that's idiotic. Like, what? <laughs> Wait, uh, explain that to me. So on TV, oh, you... on TV, okay, on the okay. 4chan board TV, you know, like <clears throat> part of their autism. <laughs> is designated like oh this is a flick this is a movie this is a film and this is kino and i, I think there might be one other um one other oh term like designator and i'm like that completely for it's me all supposed to be ironic you know pe these people are unironic and i'm like that com that to <laughs> me is completely antithetical to everything everything i stand for in filmmaking you can't like once you start compartmentalizing all these movies, oh, this is a flick, but this is Kino. You know, you fall into these trappings in which you can't find beauty in things that might um, might not right. be Tarkovsky right. or might not be, you know, Balabanov or, or, or something like that, right? You, you start to say, yeah. you, you start to compartmentalize things and then you don't take those things maybe as seriously. Maybe some films that actually should be taken seriously, like, for example... It was Cahiers du Cinema 
who um, took seriously the B movies, the the you know, and they coined film noir. Now, if those right, TV right. people existed in, in the 40s, it'd be like, oh, these are flicks, which is like, I guess, the lowest. And they wouldn't right. give them a, a second thought. And now it's like, no, these are actually amazing films. And it's just a way to just, I think, be intellectually stupid. I think it's just a way. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's stupid. I think it's idiotic. I think that anyone who actually thinks this way unironically needs to just completely yeah. get brainwashed or not. They need to have that brainwashing, that fucking 4chan ironic brainwashing, like taken out of them. Look, I like, I like, yeah. you know, like I like the TV board. I mean, it's, it's cringe like a lot of times, but that is like one thing that I've had maybe about 10 to 20 messages asking me to do this video. And I've said many times, and I'll have people, I've said many times I won't do it. And I've had people also like where I say, I call something a movie and I'll get like replies going like, oh no, that's a flick. And I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. Like, honestly, no shut the no, fuck are you up. Joking? I'm not joking. That, yeah. What? This it's almost is like they don't realize like the English language usually has like a bunch of different words to describe the exact same thing because you don't want to just be saying the same word. I don't want to say the same thing. In my yeah. videos, I will be like, I'll switch between movie and film, you know, yeah. like every other time so that I'm not saying movie, movie, movie over the, all the time or film, film, film over the yeah. time, like all the time. Well, like for me, okay. For example, back in the day when I was like 18, 19, 20, I wasn't, like I said, I, I used to do a bunch of forms. I, I don't know, 4chan, I don't know. I didn't even, I don't use it, but I'm talking about, do you guys know Mubi? It's a streaming service. Yeah. 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 Okay. So before it was Mubi, it was called the, well, actually it was called Mubi before it was a streaming service. And there was a forum before that. It was called the auteurs, like the auteurs dot com. Um, and we had a forum. <clears throat> I had about 20, 25,000 uh, comments on that forum and they fucking erased all of them. Gone. Everything I ever wrote on that forum is gone. hundred um, percent because they went mainstream and they went to like the streaming route and, and they, they got all politically correct and everything. Dude, um, Criterion so got rid of their um, Criterion got rid I, of their yeah. forums, too. IMDb got rid of it. Yeah, I know. Dude, I, IMDb forms, those were that, Those were great. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> was great. Awesome. It, it's like, yeah, it's so unfortunate that they got rid of Well, IMDb. like, I, I, okay, I can tell yeah. you guys where the new, the new form is going to be. This is going to be the new frontier of forms. Film forms on Craigslist. I'm telling you. <laughs> they exist. Off. I've been making um, <laughs> a bunch of Craigslist posts like, oh, if you have a weird story. Like I've been doing it in like in a bunch of different cities recently. I get a lot of answers. The, there's, But there, there's Craigslist there's forums. There's a lot of – oh, yeah, okay. There's, the weird. Craigslist forums are like – it's like a handful of people that are very, very active. And I, when I say wow. a handful, I mean like just a handful, like probably less than 10 people who are very active on the Craigslist forums. But I think that the film – Film discussion on Craigslist is definitely going to be the next uh, Vanguard. That's exciting. But 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 like well, so on on this old auteurs forum, I I, I know what you're like. I'm essentially what I'm trying to say is there are a lot of people now. Maybe this is what they're doing now with the flick versus movie bullshit shenanigans. But like back in the day, it was like if you if you liked Steven Spielberg. You're a you're a pussy normie uh, bitch that needs to get out of the community. It, but but if you like, otherwise th there was a hierarchy. Of what I'm trying to say, people yeah. who it, and and it's like if the the more obscure you uh, director you could name, like Sharanas Bartas or like you know Wang Bing or all these we fucking weird like Czechoslovakian directors, uh, like the worse the more obscure rabbit hole you can find is like you're at the top of the hierarchy, then you can determine what kind of activities happen on the forum and all of that stuff. And it got very, very, very annoying. Uh, see, but, here's the thing, right? Yeah. I don't get <laughs> why people um, feel like it's like this big virtuous thing to have sat down and watched a ton of movies. Yeah. And I'm saying that as someone who does that myself. I know. Right? Like all, all of so, us like, probably watch a shit ton of films. But yeah. there's a thing that happens for anybody who just like gets into film. Maybe they've been into it for a year or two. They have that thing where this impulse in them to show off and like yeah. to be yeah, it's... big dog, like the big. Oh, I know all about films, and I, you know, I know the most obscure director. Like that, that kind of right. 
that's just you know it, that's what it always breeds in, in, in those kind of guys uh, when you're young you mean that you didn't watch all of out one in one sitting <laughs> it's <never> normie seen out. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah no it, you ever I, watch, um, I don't get that either because is that guy's name I was going to um, say, I don't get that either because, um, you know, the thing is, a lot of the big popular movies like The Godfather, you know, Apocalypse Now, North by Northwest, Vertigo, The Sunrise, The Song of Two Humans, um, Citizen Kane, The Magnificent Ambersons, like, a lot of these big movies are also great and some of the best films ever, and I've seen, I've seen you know, quite a few obscure movies, uh, Yeah, and there's, there's, Definitely great obscure movies, but I've also seen plenty of terrible obscure movies, and the obscurity doesn't make it better. And also, I just want to say that, you know, the only thing it really takes to watch a movie is to sit your ass down and stare at a screen for two hours. Like, sit your ass down and listen. (laughs) Yeah, sit your white ass down and listen to Jacques. You know what I think? (laughs) There's there's another layer to this that maybe you guys agree with or not, but there's this kind of, um, um, saf- like safari hunt or some sort of like hunting um, layer. I, like I'm going, I'm going to go on a hunt for the I, most obscure movie I can find, and then and then it's like you have to go down the rabbit hole to get some of this stuff. And, I enjoy and, that. I enjoy yeah, that. I so enjoy, I'm not saying yeah. that there's like I like there's, it. There's too. definitely something, and like Kino said, there's a lot of shit. Like there's that theory that 90 percent of everything is shit. So of course most of it's going to be shit, but it is fun. To like fucking find like yeah. very obscure yeah. movies. Like like for example, at this place in Dallas I found the Criterion collection DVD that I bought of the Beastie Boys collection. Um and you know, I got that. They they sold it to me for a steal. They sold it to me for five bucks. I went on eBay and like the cheapest one's a hundred dollars. So um, you know, and I've definitely I have definitely hunted down pretty obscure movies. Right. Uh, and it's and it's fun. Like I at, at a certain point, I kind of like the hunt better than the movie. The fact that I'm like, oh, I found this. Yeah, I found this. I got this. Like I got this film. I I can't believe that I was able to to, to get this. Um, well, and, I'm not trying yeah. to discount that whole that whole thing either because I actually, um, as somebody who's really really into like Japanese new wave cinema, like oh, uh, yeah, there's Mashiro plenty of and you know. Teshigahara and all these and there's so many under unknown directors that are un- yeah. that are on par with like Kurosawa that like I was having a lot of fun exploring that stuff like on surrealmovies.com or whatever whenever before that got shut down yeah um, and there's a there's a lot of um pretty unknown yeah. eastern european films or ex-soviet yes. bloc films you know and like some of them were fucking incredible I think um yeah. Like I like you. I think we've chatted about the human condition before. Oh yeah, the human condition is great. It's one of my favorite movies. Like, but like I'm this. I did a video recently called "I'm Not a Normie," and um, it's like the whole conversation is like, what is a normie? What's 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 a film snob elitist? And we kind of like broke it down. But it's like if you can't, if you're like, if you're, I you can kind of tell if somebody's like favorite movies are all like obscure, weird stuff that's like probably not actually their favorite movies. They have self esteem issues. They're posturing. Yeah, <laughs> they have self-esteem. Like for me, like in the mood for love. I, this is my top five. In the mood for love, Alien, Andre Rublev, Lord of the Rings, Apocalypse Now, Paths Very of good. Glory, uh, a, a really obscure movie called Muddy River, which is amazing. It's uh, the guy who directed Naked Island, The Naked Island, uh, Kanito Shindo. But that's probably that. the. But then that's right next to um. That's right next to Doctor Strange Love, you know, and then on the nineteen twenty eight. Les Miserables, or 1933 Les Miserables adaptation. And then that's right next to Spirited Away. It's like, yeah, can you guys my, just be honest with your opinions? <laughs> yeah, my favorite movies like are... Like, Jurassic Park is awesome. My favorite movies yeah, are... Go ahead. Sallow, Irreversible, a Serbian film, uh, <laughs> Guinea Pig. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> no, it's just... Um, it's 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 just yeah. it's just posturing. It's people trying to seem cool, but honestly, they they might come. People on other forums might might think that they're cool, but really, to to people who have seen quite a bit, they don't come off as cool. They come off more as tryhards or as yes. it's like, come on, just be for honest sure. with yourself. Like, okay, I'm not the biggest fan of Spielberg. Like, for for example, 
I wasn't mm-hmm. really into the Fablemans that much. I thought it was kind of boring. Right. Um, I've honestly ha- kind of had it with these like, wow, look how, look how he grew as a filmmaker. Kind of you know kind of right. movies. I, I'm just kind of done with those. Uh, but That's there's fair. he was better in the '90s anyway. He was. What about cin- Cinema Paradiso? I didn't care for Cinema Paradiso for some of the same reasons um, yeah. as the Fablemans. Like I wasn't Wait, a big which, fan. Which cut? Which cut of it did you see? Of Paradiso, um, yeah. I'm not sure which cut I saw. There's one that's long. Uh, anyway, I, yeah. I saw whatever the one was. Is it Goddard? The... Is that Jean Luc Godard? No no no, 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 no. No, it's an Italian movie. Um, which, what's the what's the Godard movie he made like semi recently that like came out of hiding and made like a big movie? No, I he didn't. He didn't make any. Or... He didn't make oh. any big movies oh. the last ten years. He made never mind. Goodbye to language. He made. Um, he he made what he basically described as video essays or visual essays, and they're just like, literally like YouTube, like pretentious YouTube poop type of stuff. I showed Emplem in one of his new movies, and we were both <laughs> laughing. Um, <laughs> That's sad that you're comparing Goddard to YouTube poop. That where have we come as a society? <laughs> and no, dude, he sucked for like. Like the past, I know. Like, I, I'm not a fan. Years. I'm not a fan. No, I like. I was I, like. I really like some of his early, early stuff. But like, some of it. That's... Some of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, Pierre I'm... LeFou is. I really like that. I like um, Breathless a lot, and also like the remake of Breathless. I, I... Think I actually like. Oh, the, the one with Richard Gere. I think I like some yeah. of the left yeah. bank. Yeah. I like. I like some of the left bank film French filmmakers more so than like the French New Wave stuff. But, but no, no, but yeah, no, Godard has fucking like he he's got he's had dementia for the past thirty years, it seems like. Like he's fucking lost it. He yeah. he sucks. Well he but, also is dead. dead. Is he dead? Oh, he's dead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's dead, yeah. Oh. Rest in peace. Poor guy. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace to the goat. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um no, like as far as like movies about people's like early lives i much prefer films like a Chord or the hand of god okay to, to to me it's like um or you know some of the or, or fanny and alexander right um i've never seen that i gotta watch that. never seen it it's, i haven't i just haven't seen it, it it's just like uh um I, I prefer the ones that really kind of go more into the humanity and less into like the this is how i I knew that filmmaking was like right for me and, right. and whatever I, I don't know what about scenes from a marriage are you a fan of that one you know, I haven't seen scenes I from like marriage it. yet. Um, I've oh, seen almost. So I've seen almost every. No, um, one of my family members was telling me to watch scenes from a marriage last week. I've seen almost every Bergman film, just not scenes from a marriage. I think, I think I just have right. some like ex- existential fear of just like watching, uh, watching a couple like um, fight on screen. You yes. know. Yeah. Um, so I've been. I I, I've I've owned it on Blu-ray for many many years so why why do you like possession so much then <laughs> because possession is fun <laughs> like i haven't, I, I haven't dude, seen it I, you know what here's the thing right i yeah, watched it yeah. recently because you were like oh let's do a thing about yeah. it and it's it was like 10 year gap since the last time i saw it i think i liked it more the first time i saw it but this time i fucking hated it you hated I couldn't stand it, it. it gave, yeah because i woke up it was like 2 a.m i took a nap i had a headache and then it's the thing about that movie. It's incredibly shrill. Like it's like people are just screaming the whole time. And I had I'm, like a I'm bad gonna run headache. to the bathroom quick. You guys fight about that movie. I'll be right. I'll be right back. I apologize. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, I'm not uh, even fighting. I'm not fighting. I'm not trying to fight about it. Like I'm just. <laughs> no, 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 saying, I mean, it is a matter. It is a matter of taste. Like, and I say in my video <laughs> that that style isn't for everyone. And I'm sure that if you're hungover. It would not play very well with you. <laughs> I wasn't even hungover. I was just like, I guess I didn't drink like enough water. I was dehydrated. I, I, I took a nap. I woke up and I just had this bad headache. And I'm like, I, I watched it and I just I was like, damn, it's too much. Yeah. But, I, it, no. you know, it, the thing is, it's a thing of like, if I was in the right say to like mine at the point when i watched it i would have been see totally, you, sh- you should have been, been fine you should have been more drunk and less hungover <laughs> i wasn't the, hungover no but you had the headache you had the headache like obviously you, you know this reminds me of um one of my favorite movies is elio petri's investigation of a citizen above suspicion i gotta watch that still you've been talking the, I, I think that, that's the first movie 
that you mentioned when I met you, actually. Oh, okay, yeah. And I've seen it a million times, but um, I, uh, I remember when I had COVID a couple of years ago, and I was with my parents. It was actually over Christmas, so it was exactly two years ago. Um, cause I was at my parents' place for, uh, during, <laughs> we all got COVID. <laughs> um, and I was actually like, honestly, COVID like didn't really do much for me. Like I felt fine after like two days and I just was watching a lot of these, like we we're just watching movies all day because I just, you know, we just said, I mean, what else is there to do? Right. <laughs> um, so we were watching like Ugetsu, I think that's when I watched The Human Condition. Um, watched a whole bunch of these films. And I put in Investigation of a Citizen Above Suspicion. And that also is a fairly shrill movie. Um, I mean, shrill not in this... Like, it's just very Italian of all these Italians always yelling at each other. And the yeah. thing is, is that if you're... Not, if you're not sick and you're not hungover and you're, like, in a pretty good, like state of mind it's you can really, take it you can take it and it's really fun because it's like you know it's like oh it's fun it's like looking at you know italians kind of going at each other's throats and screaming and you know and being very very sort of you know uh uh theatrical and everything it's really fun but when you have covid and you kind of have a headache and you're just not all there it's really difficult, I have to say. So easy to put you off because, like, it's like, fuck, man, I'm just trying to chill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm back. I'm back. You know. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, let's get back to American Psycho. We've talked about literally. Yeah. Every by other the way. Movie. By the way, this what is are we, like an hour. It. Hour, <laughs> like how how fucking long have we? Been We've been doing this for like fifty want, minutes or an hour. An hour. An hour. An hour dude, yeah. I, dude, I could do this for days. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I, lo I love this shit. I just don't have anyone to talk to about it. Um, <laughs> so, but here's the thing. Uh, the, the writer of American Psycho, Brady I want to know, I want to know this because it's, I've never looked into it, but was he really like 19 when he wrote this? No, no, no. He was 20. Why do I, he was 21 when okay. he wrote lesson zero. Well, I say oh, wrote, okay. but when released 24, when he came out with the rules of attraction, and then I believe 27 or 28 when he came out with American Psycho. And now okay. he's just, now he's an old, angry queen with a podcast. Dude, he makes a lot <laughs> of, he makes a I, lot of money on his I, podcast. I know, but I, I used to listen to his podcast and it, it's, it's a, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot to take. <laughs> he's always complain, bitching about something. He is. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny is. When you listen to his podcast or like listen to some of the like recordings that he's done, especially like reviewing reviewing films, because he he was talking recently about how he did, how he really likes being a movie critic. So we should try to get him on the Kino cast. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Yeah. I think we, I think you, I think Kino might be you might be cl close to doing something get, like that. Would you get him canceled? <laughs> no, you don't no, I don't do think. That. It, no. <laughs> No, no, no. He, 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 he would be, no, we would be more likely to get canceled by having him on than him more YouTube likely to shut your to channel be, down or, you know, you, you know it, it, it's like him coming onto our podcast would make us cancelable, not the other way around. Right. Because wow. he's way, yeah, he's way more. Controversial hey, I, than the the reason are. why I'm saying that is because Zack Snyder came. Well, I'm, I'm friends with the geeks and gamers guys on YouTube and um, th there was a big controversy. Zack Snyder came on uh, to talk about a, a movie, and and he got essentially he got canceled for coming on their stream. <laughs> it was a big deal. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't think know. that would happen with Who, Brett. Who's, um, <laughs> I think Brett's wait. I think, who's, I think Brett who's has done enough. <laughs> Geeks who's, and gamers. Yeah. So what? So what happened? Just, well, Zack Snyder came on to promote one of his. Um, oh, I want to say Batman versus Superman. And uh, the Geeks and Gamers guys are a little bit, you know, I guess conserved, too conservative for some people. And they make jokes about, you know, whatever, uh, politically incorrect jokes. Uh, it turns out that Snyder apparently didn't know about this. He came on this the this, this show and then um, uh, he had to disavow them on Twitter. 
and it it it, it was this caused a big nightmare uh yeah geeks and gamers is like oh so he he did disavow them he did he yeah so, what, like, so like in a very subtle conservative? Way, yeah he basically just said that he didn't they they removed the geeks and gamers sponsorship from some thing that he was involved in i i can't remember the whole thing but it was just kind of a big deal <laughs> yeah i i totally do not keep up with any of that stuff <laughs> right, right. I, i've never heard of yeah. I, yeah, yeah i don't even i honestly don't even know who geeks and gamers are very pop a lot of pop culture stuff a lot of video game stuff recently and it's just you know if it's not your thing it's not your thing so i yeah i'm joking <laughs> i just watch i honestly i i'm not joking when i just watch uh roman history or like weird sort of like <laughs> theological stuff on on youtube that so on bro a lot of this stuff i don't on, even watch like youtubers anymore i watch only howard stern howard stern like I, dude, I also i also watch like episode like history channel episodes that they just have uploaded like history channels uploaded the full versions of i love watching ancient aliens dude that's the fucking funniest that's the shit. best that's no, the ancient funniest. aliens is great it's ancient fucking ancient hilarious aliens. dude it, and i was talking about this with some of my friends yesterday it's like the entire ancient aliens is predicated on people thinking that all of our ancestors were stupid. It's like, no, they're too dumb to do this. <laughs> <Out of aliens. Yeah. laughs> but I love. Did, did you know that uh, <laughs> that Archimedes was actually a dolphin that came from Atlantis that was an alien before it's that? Funny. And that ended up being <laughs> they, they, uh, <laughs> smart, no. very smart man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're right though. They 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 don't give credit to some of these people. Like, if you guys know anything about ancient Chinese history, the Ch the Chinese were fucking brilliant. Like two thousand years ago, they had like megalithic cities, like mass like, math massive massive like cities. You know, they were so advanced for their time. And you know, it's like it's nah, kind of it had to be aliens, dude. dude. <laughs> had to be aliens yeah whatever <laughs> and, and how, the, how the shows flow how the shows flow too is it goes from like this one thing and they somehow connect it to this like totally un, like not related thing and it just has the most schizo flow like it's all the really, episodes it's i i really enjoy watching <laughs> there used to be a show on actually on vice where it was like action bronson the rapper and then like tyler the creator and like a bunch of other people um and they would just watch ancient aliens and like <laughs> react. It was like the the best thing that Vice has ever done. No, and it's and it's so Everybody funny I too. Know. It's so funny too that like the narrator is like, but were these done by extraterrestrial beings? Yeah, <laughs> the way that he says no, it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um. What about what about uh? Well, the people that watched that I watched it with were all fucking stoners, and they believed everything, all of it. <laughs> no, it's uh, dude. Isn't it? It's isn't so it funny. more based? To actually believe that, though, Dude, yeah, like I, I, both space and red pill sigma male opinion. Dude, go yes. to the comment section on the ancient alien uh, uh, videos on YouTube. <laughs> Read the comments, and it's like so much truth in here. It's like so much truth, <laughs> and that people are like totally buying. Like so many of the comments are like buying this hook, line, and sinker. And I'm like, no, this is stupid i mean i like it because it's stupid right it's yeah i love it when the ancient aliens people clash with the flat earthers and they have debates it's so funny it's great Don't you mean but ancient astronaut what... theorists yes what about ancient apocalypse have you seen it yeah i actually liked it. ancient apocalypse it's i think very good is way that that is way more grounded than ancient aliens yes um, yes, I liked Ancient Apocalypse 100%. a lot. Yeah, that's the the Graham Norton. Oh, that's the yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Or oh, Graham Hancock. <laughs> Graham Hancock. Graham Hancock. Yeah. It's actually it's actually like what I like. I'm looking at this temple that's buried under the ground, and I'm like, the why? The, why are we go big? Yeah, Teppy. Yeah, go Blecky Teppy. Uh, yeah, you Blecky know what? Teppy. Yeah, go Blecky Teppy. Yeah, I I actually looked into go Blecky Teppe a while back, um, because I think that was discovered in what 2019. Pretty pretty recently, no, at least. Wait. Yeah, that was earlier than that, I think. It was, but, no, yeah, it doesn't but matter. It, it's been, yeah, but really it's been pretty recent. And when they, like, dated all this stuff, they realized that, like, these megalithic structures were made when we th think that hunter-gatherers, yeah. it, it was like everyone was a hunter-gatherer. Then you're like, okay, so how did they... Where, you know, you kind of have to have civilization 
to kind learn though, mas- to learn masonry and to be able to put all that effort together if they're just hunter gatherers then then how are they able to sort of you know right, so they just create it. this see i don't i don't but, know but isn't it obvious they, like they did like there's like evidence of like fucking but the, but think about this then, like, think about this native i have native american ancestry uh, the Native Americans before, like during like the colonialization period, and like, you know, a couple hundred years before that, uh, they were hunting with spears. They were running or They weren't using the wheel. They were doing a lot of very, very, very stuff that like wasn't advanced. But then compare that to like ancient Mayan cultures, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a, like it's crazy that you can have one society and you can have another society that is much more advanced at the same exact time, or bef- you know what I mean. Yeah, that's exactly, how, but but that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying is is that yeah, um, there were probably hunter gatherers, a lot of hunter yes. gatherers around at that time, but it puts it puts when society you know or when civilizations were were um, started, definitely at a much earlier date. So I right, you know the thing is I'm not an archaeologist, uh, so I'm totally right. not like this isn't my area of expertise. I wouldn't be surprised if there were civilizations that are much um you know are much older than we know because a a lot of these scientists like archaeology for example is actually a pretty young study um you know not Mm -hmm. too long ago they were like you look at like the archaeological methods and they're just like yeah let's just use dynamite to to blow up to go inside here and it was totally just like hobbyists you know that found a lot of the Egyptian, you know, ancient Egyptian stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, e- even the guy that found Troy, I, the guy that found the uh, remnants of Troy, was like this rich guy that really wasn't an archaeologist. He was more of just like this obsessive rich guy. I forget what his name was. Um, and that was in well, the yeah. 19th century. Oh, yeah. Like, that wasn't really that long ago. So I've always been a person with a very open mind. And, you know, I think that, like, okay, there is this... Uh, and this is how, you know, I think a good approach to science and honestly history or, you know, archaeology is kind of a mix of both. But you can have your your the narrative that's that's going on right now be, based on all the evidence that you have saying that this is what kind of makes yeah. the most sense. But if something comes up that, you know, if you discover something that then throws out a question, then you have to kind of reassess. And I think that, right. you know, I think. I don't know. I, maybe no, maybe the show's super great. skewed, but bro, bro, no, 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 no. Bro, no. You don't realize it, yeah. that there's ancient Tartarian civilizations <laughs> underneath the White House, <laughs> and that all of the pyramids are <laughs> jump portals to different planets in the in, in the solar system. Look, you, I, I, you just don't realize. I'm that. just saying, what using kind of- Occam's razor, using Occam's razor, okay, with yeah. the pyramids thing, I think it's much more likely that. Uh, there were ice age era civilizations where humans, you know, learned masonry and learned how to make these megalithic structures and that, that uh, those skills were passed down through generations and wound up in Egypt where they were able to build the pyramids using these, this previous knowledge. I just say that's probably more likely than aliens came down (laughs) and built the pyramids. Much more likely. That's all I'm saying. Dude, all I'm yeah. saying is that <laughs> dolphins were from Atlantis and they were once human. All right, Patrick, that's all I'm Patrick, saying. What would Patrick Bateman say about this? <laughs> Are we supposed to be talking about American um, Psycho? <laughs> a very, very nice. Now let me see the gray aliens. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, let me let me see Paul Allen's uh, 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 fossil. <laughs> He would no yeah. Patrick Bateman would get like the third largest pyramid and then just be seething like, about it and the biggest the the Giza the big Giza yeah. pyramid would be Paul would Allen's. It. <laughs> yeah, it would. Yeah. Oh I, I want to I want to talk about something. Uh, you know, we were talking about how Halloween earlier like really doesn't have that much um that much actual violence in it. In editing together right. this American Psycho video, I realized the same thing about American Psycho is that it really doesn't have that much violence in it. It's, it's a pretty, um, you know, like people, people have told me that they thought that it was like really graphic or really disturbing. And, you know, I've seen it a million times, but really going through it, I don't think that it's that disturbing at all in any way. I think think the most, 
even the most disturbing that it gets is him dropping a chainsaw uh, down a yeah. stairwell. And, and, you it, don't even and that's see cartoony. Impact. Yeah. His laugh is more disturbing than the chainsaw. Yeah. And I, I remember I remember Christian Bale said that the violence, and he says the violence and terror is more in the atmosphere than it is in anything you actually see. Um, actually, can I, can I, can I give a, Maybe you'll agree with me. I think the most disturbing scene in the movie is his mental breakdown on the phone with his lawyer. No, I, I agree with that. Whenever yeah, I yeah. watch that, I I like I start sweating. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, no, I'm uh, up, I totally agree with that. I'm kind of a it's sick so guy. fucked up. Well, he I'm also kind of a sick guy. He also <laughs> yeah, mentions in in that scene. He mentions a lot of the uh, um. He mentions a lot yeah. of the stuff from the book that we don't see. Like we see, we see that some nods to things he did, like cutting off the model's head, you know, and he opens up the fridge and we see the model's head in his fridge kind of in right. saran wrap or whatever, or in a plastic bag. Um, we don't see like the girl that he put the, the rat up her, um, snatch. Oh, that happens in the book. Yeah. So there's, uh, so if anyone is like listening to this and you know you're squeamish, you might not want to listen to this next little bit. Trigger um, warning. Trigger warning. Um he takes this girl and it's the I believe that this girl is the girlfriend of the chef at Dorcia. And he nail guns her uh and he's like she's like an ex-girlfriend of his. He nail guns her hands to these planks of wood and then he tries to get this rat to go up her uh, vagina. And when this this starved rat that he found in his toilet, and when that doesn't work, he puts this tube up it and puts uh, old brie cheese in the tube. And then he puts the rat in there and then shuts it off and then has the rat oh like God. go in there. And he says that he can see like the bump and he the rat is like eating her from the inside out. And then he cuts her in half, Holy and the rat shit. comes out like the stomach part. Um, so, yeah, so there's so the, the, the writer of the book. It's kind of it's kind of a little fucked up. <laughs> it may be a little bit. Uh, there's another thing where he like, um, he tortures. He does all this kind of torturing to a girl, and then he cuts off her head and uh, basically gets a BJ after from the cutoff head. Um, wow. So there's like, like the violence in the book is really disturbing, really graphic, but it's made Ed, to be, Edward. Oh no, sorry. Go it's on. made sorry. to be just like how all the sex scenes in the book, they are written like smut. It's written. The sex is super graphic too. And I, in the purpose, I think of course, now I'm speaking like like this is how Brady and Ellis speaks, right? And the right, purpose right. and the purpose You're defending of this. Him. Why are you defending? No, no, no. Him? I'm I'm saying like this is like his I'm cadence, his like cadence. I've been oh, listening okay. to a lot of his podcasts recently, <laughs> and the purpose of this section really is to just highlight how Patrick Bateman is not exactly living in the real world. Um, <laughs> You know, and it's like these like way over the top where you think, how is this physically possible? And when Brett Easton Ellis was talking about writing the book, he was like, he goes, you know, after I wrote like, you know, some really fucked up thing he did. He, or, you know, there's there there's another thing that where he slices a kid's throat at a, a four year old's throat at the zoo and then pretends to be a doctor uh, and pretends to help the kid when, in fact, he's making sure that the kid dies. Um, wow. but it's like, there's all these things that happen in the book that seem in, like that are graphic and way over the top, like almost too over the top. Right. And they seem implausible. Yeah. They seem possible, but implausible. And the idea is that like, it's made to be so over the top that you think, is this actually real right. like is this actually happening you know what the thing is too like there there are certain rules that everybody like if you're telling a story you set up certain rules yeah if you're if especially if you're really good so you can do an allegory or you can do something like this where it's like you you have to agree like to go with this kind of thing 
and it's like and well, it gets and, so top and and if you go with it, it yeah you'll be rewarded at the end of it yeah and the book is written like it's patrick bateman's diary you know it's all from his perspective except for when he's wow. going on that spree through the city you know like the shooting spree it goes into third person which is really interesting um it's a, it's like the one break in the third person uh so that's like obviously kind of like not real like he's like disassociated from himself at that point when um, did um when did you first watch this movie when did i first watch it remember yeah um you know i wasn't allowed to watch it when i was <laughs> living with my parents uh so right. probably my first year of, i think it was my first year of college okay it, it was either my my senior year of high school and my first year of college um was it before or after fight club it was before Fight Club. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, 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 you know, I watched them. I, I watched them at a, at around the same time, though. Um, so okay. I think I saw them within the same year. You know, it's when I was seventeen, eighteen, and I was watching yep. like I was watching all those movies. I was watching The Clockwork Orange, Fight Club, American <laughs> Psycho, Taxi Driver, right? Like those yeah, are like yeah. the Still movies. Bill, that, uh, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, 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 I got into Tarant like I I got into Tarantino. I was getting into Kubrick, you know, uh, and Fincher, and like all you know, Fincher, and and, yep. and these were like the movies that really kind of got me into the cinema, in like really into movies, which is same. I mean, same. There's well, a reason well, I, why that, the, you might be younger than me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's I think a, you're a little bit younger. But. Yeah, I'm I'm 28. Well, I'm third. I'm 32, but I think we're I think that's close enough because I I remember watching. American Psycho. Of, okay, do you guys know G4 TV? Yeah. Back yeah, in the day. Yeah, of course, yeah. They recommended American Psycho. And and also Old Boy was another one. Um, and, and I was like maybe 16, 17. And I just somehow got a hold of it and watched it. Like that was like, yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe I watched it a little bit before you. I'm not sure. But I think, yeah, it's about similar stories. I mean, yeah. you're younger than you. But like the thing is, like I, I remember know. like just like just yeah. fucking – torrenting all of this shit too oh okay like, yeah I, yeah i mean it's just like these movies and one one reason obviously like these movies are also popular and they're popular on the internet now especially among young men i mean that makes sense right like these movies are are great i love these movies they're also good you know intros into cinemas and so the reason why yeah. i like the doing the literally me movies it's not just because like playing into the memes and doing stuff like that but it's like I understand too that these films are a lot of young kind of cinephile, especially young men's intro yep. into film. And it's like, okay, well, these are the films that you that you like that you know. Let's like let me like show you how to kind of look at it from maybe a cinephile or like a sort of anal right. analytical perspective, and then you can. You know, and it's like, oh, I know this. Oh, and it gets you to like watch it in a different way. And then when you go and you go deeper into the film world, then you start like, you know, mm -hmm. looking through a more kind of analytical or more like art appreciator kind of lens rather than just a kind of the, the um, green lens of like just watching, yeah. you know, just watching the movie and not really being That's completely with or completely understanding of like film knowledge and film language. Well, that's actually kind of why I like the artist, director, auteur kind of perspective because it 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 tends to draw people into like um like a like a mini little rabbit hole where you're like, I'm gonna watch every Tarantino, you know, uh, I'm gonna watch every David Fincher movie. I like I like um I like yeah. Fight Club. I like Seven. And then you go through that little thing, and then you're like, okay, well, who who's similar to Fincher? And then you're like, I you know what I mean? Like, there's this kind of like that's an interesting way to like. No, yeah, film, I, 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 mean, I do that too. Like, and, and there, directors you know, will say, six degrees. yeah, directors yeah. will say like who they're inspired by, and then I'll go and I'll watch exactly. the the people that inspired them. Like, I remember I watched Wes Anderson was when, when I was a teenager, and then he was talking all about these French New Wave films. I just, and then I started binging like Truffaut and Demi and Mal right. and like all you know, all these like uh, all these people, and um, you know, and eventually like oh. got into Duvivier. Uh, Renoir and, and and there's this there's just like a ton of like really interesting films that you can learn about if you're paying attention you know you say 
they, yeah. you know, they'll say like, oh yeah, this movie is very much inspired by this other film, very much inspired by this director, et cetera, et cetera. And it kind of leads you on this cinematic journey. And I like that American mm-hmm. Psycho is very much like, it is kind of an entry point. It's a great movie in my opinion. It's also an entry point into, into film and into satire and dark comedy in general. Um, you know, and if and uh, I wanted to talk about how he says he needs to return some videotapes because in the book they don't talk about this at all in the movie. Um, in the book, you know, one of his favorite movies is uh, Brian De Palma's Body Double. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have seen that wow. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen it. Yeah, which you know what I think is like that's a lesser Brian De Palma for me. Like when I think of Brian De Palma and like the movies from him, I really like. I think, uh, I think Blowout and Sisters, uh, Scarface, um, mm-hmm. Body Double for yeah, me. Those are, is, Body Double is is wacky. Is wacky. But I, but I, I like the wackiness of it. I can I hundred percent understand why Patrick Bateman loves Body Double though. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it, it's this it's, guy it's, that gets it's some, about a fucking yeah yeah. No, you yeah, say go on. No, no, yeah, you, it's you say. fucking weird ass pervert. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. Okay, okay. This is the guy who did. Uh, for some reason, Brian De Palma I was like, "Oh, that's the guy who did Carlito's Way." Then I guess he did a bunch yeah, of yeah, Jurassic Kill. Yeah, yeah okay. he um, I dude, he, like, he he's Mom's also anchor. another guy who's really uh, inspired by Hitchcock. Body mm. double. This looks interesting. It's a very interesting movie. I will say that. Um, but it's like this pervert who's like staying at like he's like house sitting this. That for this, it, it, he's like a kind of a B movie actor that's kind of washed up a little bit, or he, he's not able to kind of make it. He's staying at like this rich guy's, rich friend of his house. He's house sitting for him, and it's one of those like modernist houses that's like almost all like mm-hmm. windows, and so he can see into all these houses in like the valley below him. And right. um, he starts, and it's kind of the rear, hit, the yeah, it's kind of rear window esque, yeah. or even north by northwest esque, you know, like a kind mm-hmm. of like the house in north by northwest. But or the first, the first scene in Psycho isn't the first scene. Oh, or am I thinking of a different? Movie no, the first scene like in Psycho is in the hotel through room. a window. Well, oh, what am I thinking? No, Psycho goes <laughs> in through the window into the right. two of them, Tippy Hedder and whoever. Oh, the Batman! Hedren. The Batman! There you go. <laughs> He's peeking through the window at uh, at a. Uh, at the Riddler killing that yeah. guy. Remember that? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. But what I'm saying is that... Um, so then he starts spying on this girl. He starts kind of perving out on her. And mm-hmm. kind of like Rear Window, he notices that something... It's been a couple of years since I've seen it. But it's like something bad is, is happening to her. There are people who are trying to kill her. You know, things like that. So he kind of goes into her world. He starts trying to figure out who she is. She's this porn actress... And so he kind of gets into the world of porn, and um, he's uh, there's this whole conspiracy. It's a very kind of convoluted, wacky movie, and you're yeah. not quite sure if it's in reality or if it's not. It has tons of sex. It has tons of like violence, you know. Um, and I like you, oh. you, you watch that movie, and, and it's kind of about a guy who really doesn't have much of a grasp on reality, and you're not really sure what's real at the end of the day. And it's like, oh yeah, of course this would be what Patrick Bateman watches. <laughs> like, of course this is like, this is the movie that is, is brought up. Um, um, you know, and Brady Snells is a big fan of genre cinema. And he yeah. talks about genre cinema quite a lot. He talks about kind of his aesthetics and he likes, you know, like a big thing that Brady Snells talks about is, is liking aesthetics over ideology. Um, but Brian De Palma is one of Brady Snells' like favorite, um, film directors okay. and uh you know so of course he would he would factor he would factor that into um american psycho uh but i wanted to also talk about like with the whole videotapes media consumption and everything uh is this one of the funniest uh chapters in american psycho is when he goes to the video store uh when he goes to the video store, there's too many movies for him to choose, and he ends up having like a panic attack because there's too many films. And I think then he just decides to rent Body Double again. 
Oh my god. <laughs> like I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've I think every, everyone who's like browsing Criterion Channel, Netflix, or whatever, like I, I have no idea what to choose. I gotta. Ch <laughs> and, um, and then, and then I just watch Kill Kill Bill for the twentieth time. <laughs> yeah, or for or yeah. with me, I would watch Fifty First Dates for the twentieth time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, um, I like. For me, if you're saying Fifty First Dates, if we're if we're competing in the romantic comedy realm, it would have to be Along Came Polly. Yeah, with, with that's, ben, ben Stiller. I think that's a F better. Fucking it's... love that movie, dude. I okay. Yeah. I'm gonna watch Fifty First Dates tomorrow, right? You know why? Okay, I'll watch Along Came Polly tomorrow. Because I'm going on a plane. I'm going on a plane back to Florida. And Fifty First Dates is like when I go on a plane, I put on Fifty First Dates. I just kind of get into this like Zen meditated <laughs> mode. It's like that. It's that movie for me. I'm just like, okay. And the old guy next I, to you is like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I just, I know. No, I just look like a normie. Like that's also oh, the that's good true. thing. I that's just true. look like a normie watching an Adam Sandler movie on the plane. Unlike uh, the normie would be watching Bullet Train. <laughs> yes. Thank God you said that. Okay, go ahead. Well, see, unlike <laughs> unlike um, uh, when <laughs> I was flying, uh, me and my coworker Ian, who was in my possession video, he's also in my American Psycho video. I just kind of rope him into my videos now. I'm like. Ian, <laughs> you're gonna be in my video now. He's like, uh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, um, Damn. And, uh, well, Ian was a girl. <laughs> we, uh, I hey, I got a girl to be in my American Psycho video. Okay. Oh, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah. I heard about it. Um, there's, there's Wait, a couple. Girls are real. There's a couple girls. Okay. <laughs> Although I try to get, you know, there's these two girls, right? And they show up. Okay, so here's, here's like the, the funny thing. So there's these two girls, and I, I still don't really know their names, <laughs> um, but they've shown up at so many of like the events that I've been at, and they know my name, and I always get their names wrong every time I see them. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but like, so they're here in Austin, but then I went to the Vincent Gallo event in New York, um, and I was helping out with that event, and uh, um, they came in there, and they're like, oh, hey, Peter, and I had no idea who they were. And I was like, oh, do, do I do I know you? And they were like, you met us last week. And I was like, oh, uh -oh. okay. You have a problem, Peter. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, what's your name? And, and, but the, 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 the awkward thing was that they knew what my name was. And then, right. no. And so then this makes it even more awkward. So then a few weeks ago, um, I'm at a party with... Um, uh, Sam Hyde and I are smoking cigars outside at that uh, oh, post yeah. post fight Go. to Brandon Buckingham party. Um, no, 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 no. And okay. I believe you. I believe and, you. I was just shocked for a second. And uh, they come up, and so we're sitting around the fire. It's like Sam, Turkey, Tom, and me smoking cigars. And Sam and I are trying to tell Tom that he shouldn't be a nihilist. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, nobody should be a nihilist. And yeah. so then these two girls come back up, and they're like. Oh, hey, hey, Peter. And I recognized them from the New York thing. I'm like, oh, you're the New York girls. And then they're like, yeah. And I go, what was your name? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I feel bad. Yeah. It was Why do just, I feel bad for them? I don't even know them. I don't. I don't. I mean, I hardly know them, too. But the funniest <laughs> thing. So we're smoking these. We're smoking these like really nice cigars. We're smoking these really nice cigars. He's a uh, Davidoff's or Davidoff's. How are you nice. saying? Nice. And, um, you know, I, I got some, I got some nice cigars, right? It was a big night. It was a big night for the boys. And, uh, and so, and it was honestly like, they were really nice cigars. I, I, I don't smoke cigars that often, you know, it's like maybe a once a month thing. Um, Same. I go to a cigar shop a couple times a month and just hang out, but that's about it. Yeah. Like this is also a bar. It's also a bar and I'm just like, I'll drink whiskey. And then people just give you free cigars. Yeah. Go to cigar shops if you can. It's, no, it's yeah, a there's a there's a really nice one uh, here in Austin. Yeah, and and you know, yeah. and they're nice, and it's like more low key stuff and whatever. But yeah. my friends and I, like when I go to a party, I'd rather kind of like stand outside and like smoke a cigar with the guys rather than drink a lot. Yeah. So, um, anyways, so uh, these you know we're talking we're like oh yeah these are really nice cigars and I was we're kind of coming to the end of the cigars they were 
big cigars, you know, and so near to the end, I was sort of done with it. I, I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, Feel a little sick. Yeah. Well, I wasn't getting sick. You know, you just kind of like hit that point where like, you know what? I've right. had enough. Like, um, and so one of the girls, one of these girls was like, Hey, can I try the cigar? And I'm like, okay, sure. Like I'm kind of done with it. I was, I just hand it to her and I'm like, yeah, yeah you can have the rest of it. Like there's not much left. And so then I go, I'm, I'm talking back with the guys and then I hear behind me, this isn't good. And I look back and she Oh, she has, inhaled it. No, 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 no. She had, she opens her mouth and all this like ash comes out of her mouth on her lips. And she's Ew. like, how? And she's like, why do you like this? And I go, did you just put the wrong end of the cigar in your mouth? No, no. <laughs> she did. No. I, that is something I've never seen in my life. <laughs> and she looks so just like sad and like kind of traumatized with all the cigar oh, no. ashes just coming out of her mouth. And she was like, you know, sticking her tongue. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's gross. <laughs> it was nasty. Dude, I, I inhaled a cigar my first time, and I got, I got sick, and I had to jump off of a, a moving bus to throw up. This is a true story. It was really bad. Don't inhale cigars. Yeah. Smoke. I, um, you know, I was 18. My I was in uh, Nicaraguan. Uh, actually, I, I turned 18 while I was in Nicaragua. So my dad and I got cigars, and, you know, he taught me how to like basically not inhale. And because of that, yeah. I have not really been able to smoke cigarettes or anything because I just naturally just do not inhale. Anything. Well, that's the thing, right? I don't get the point of cigars at all. Hey, Patrick Bateman right? smoked cigars. He smoked a cigar right after he killed Paul Allen. Okay? Uh, yeah, but even still, right? He did like, so, he did it so even though I, I, I want to be on my Sigma, Sigma male grind you're set, your grind. The thing is, well, I just don't get the point because unless you're getting the nicotine high. You are, but you it's are the getting the nicotine. Like, you do, you do. get the experience. Yeah. Like, you do get the nicotine uh, affecting you. It just goes, it goes into your system through the membranes in your mouth um, rather than through your lungs. Because it's, yeah, like, it's way true. more powerful than cigarettes. You just got to accept it, dude, and dive into the and cigar you, world. Yeah, you just have There's to. The, it's also about the aesthetic. You know, it's about yeah. the taste. It is aesthetic, yeah. Yeah, it's about it's the about taste. The whiskey, and the it's, the, it's about, like, the combination of, like, cigar and whiskey. Cigar like, and on. whiskey it's all so of, good, dude. <laughs> it does hit good. Yeah. Yeah. One dude came in and was like, hey, you guys ever – I was at a cigar bar, and he was like, have you ever, ever had a Cuban? I was just like, no, I'm never – and he just sat down and gave us three Cubans, me and my friends. Yeah, and the, I was like, okay. People yeah, that, are very that was, friendly with cigars. That was one thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Cubans have been legal for about a few years now. So, um, right, you know, five or maybe six years or something. They've they've been legal for for a while now. But you know, you know what I do like about Cubans being legalized is that now that like people can actually get Cubans, they realize that they're really not all that much better they're about the same as like cigars from like nicaragua or honduras or like any of these yeah. other places like it's like it, oh it was the stigma yeah, yeah it, it was like totally just the stigma that you couldn't get it so yeah. people would be like oh i'm gonna like i'm gonna like take these cubans in or i'm gonna you know i'm gonna like smuggle these cubans in and okay. uh you know only for them to be about as good as like all the other cigars from latin america um <laughs> but uh but yeah no um I love it, man. Let me see. That's crazy. We we've hardly kind of talked. Like, okay, here's here's a question, and and then we we should start like wrapping this up. I know that this is like, I'll I'll title this American Psycho plus um, extra the boys, talk. The boys. The boys talk. Yeah, chat, chat with the boys. <laughs> yeah. Actually, oh, no. it's not that much different than any like other Kino cast. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we, we talk like talk about the movie for like two minutes. <laughs> Time. I think we did that with Donnie Darko time. too. I think we just yeah. <laughs> barely talked about the movie and then just like went into something else. Man. Um, but uh, do you guys think that Patrick Bateman did the murders? Um, oh man, I don't know. I like, I don't know. Like, cause you, you said something like the book is like, I don't it's way more stuff. I haven't read the book. No, but I in, in the movie, just, just using the movie. 
based on my my perception of what happened, no, because um, oh, he he was sh he was basically traumatized when the guy when the guy was like. Um, what was the what was the scene where he was talking to the other guy and and then uh, he was like, um, why why am I his lawyer? No, no, his friend. At the end, he was like, um, no, you weren't. Well, I can't remember the what they were why talking not, about. But he why was like, not, you stupid bastard? Yeah, why not, you That's stupid his lawyer. bastard? But but the thing about that is that that scene yeah. undercuts itself <laughs> because his okay. lawyer doesn't even his lawyer doesn't recognize Bateman. His lawyer's calling him by other names. I think it gets yeah, yeah. it gets to a point at that like where I just accept it as like it's kind of like almost like this fable kind of right. It's a fable. It's, a, it's, a fable. it's like a storytelling <laughs> device where it's like you know well, I don't you don't did, have to take it literally. Well, some people you dude, if you ever talk to Blade Runner fans, you you got to pick a side, man. <laughs> yeah, first Blade you Runner pick a side. is better. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. I actually don't know about American Psycho. Are there a lot of like, um, be, like, like you know, like, um, sport, like enthusiasts one way or the other, and they'll um, they'll like kill you if you disagree with them? No, no. I, it's not so much like the Blade Runner fans who are like, oh, Deckard's a replicant or Deckard's not. Right. But right. I I treat I treat American Psycho the same way that I treat Blade Runner in that I like I like to just exist in that ambiguity. Uh huh. Um, I don't. I, I, I don't. Agree. I don't really like to pick a side. When I'm looking at the movie and I'm saying like, "Huh, I wonder what's real and what's not." Like, I, you know, I think about it and I think the Paul Allen thing could be real because the whole like, right? Since the lawyer can't get even Patrick Bateman right, and Patrick Bateman is his client, wh who? What's to say that he had lunch with a different guy in London and just yeah. thought it was Paul Allen? You know, all these people are mixing each other up all the time and especially the lawyers so like who's to say that you know this is just we don't see paul allen ever again after that scene so who's to say that he's actually live but at the same time you know paul allen is probably a bit more of a uh, memorable person than patrick bateman everyone when they talk about bateman they talk about how much of a loser he is yeah you know so um maybe it's just that pat bateman is not a super memorable person but Paul Allen is, and so you know. Well, if they if they they both get the a haircut at the same place, so well he you know, yeah no, just not just memorable. Well, no, not just like him, Paul Allen, but also Halberstram, you know. And Bateman gets mixed up with Halberstram a lot. Um, no, they is they that like the glasses or something. Yeah, like they wear like the same glasses. They look very similar. I mean, they wear the same suits. Um, he's like, oh yeah, he also has a pension for like Valentino suits or something, but I have a slightly better haircut. But when you see their haircuts, they're like the exact same. It, they're like the exact same haircuts. It's not, one is not slightly better than the other. Just like the business card scene, right? The, there are yeah. some minor differences between the business cards. Like one might have like more of a texture on it and the formatting might be just a little bit different, you know, but the fonts are very close. The... The colors are very close. The basic look of each business card is the same. There's right. very minute differences that really, I mean, how long are you going to be looking at a business card? You're going to be looking at it for all of 10 seconds, right? You're mm -hmm. or, or less. You look at it, you go, oh, okay, great. You put in your thing and you only bring it out if you need to find their, uh, um, you put in your Rolodex or whatever if you need to find their like phone number. It's really not like something you pay that much attention to. And right. the th and the thing is, is like if you um, compare Patrick Bateman's business card to Paul Allen's, they look very, very, very similar. And his also looks very similar to um, Vin Patton's and Bryce's. And uh, it, there's Damn. there's only minute differences. But the thing is, is that if you were to like put them, take off their names and show them the people. I don't think that a lot of people would be able to tell you, oh, yeah, this that's definitely Van Patten's. That's definitely Bateman's. That's right. definitely Paul Allen's. That's definitely, definitely Bryce's. And I think that that's just sort of a microcosm for the whole film, where in the whole film, there are, you know, small differences between each person, but they're so close together. They went to the same schools. You know, they, they wear similar suits. They have similar haircuts. Uh, they look similar. I mean, they're all like white guys who are like 27, 28 years old. And they all work basically the same jobs. 
so for a lot of people, they're gonna mix mix these people up. I mean, it's almost like they're mm-hmm. they're interchangeable. And um, yeah. and Pat Bateman, I think what you're doing they're is as, they're, they're as interchangeable as ivory versus eggshell patterns on a <laughs> yeah on. yeah exactly. I think you're justifying that you that you were just pr- prefer to stay in the ambiguity. That's what you're trying to do. Well, what I'm <laughs> right? what, no, what I'm saying is that what I'm saying is that this whole atmosphere, this whole world, right, makes it very believable yeah. that he could kill Paul Allen, and right. people just mistake all these other people for Paul Allen, and they just think he's fine when he's not, when he's dead. But at the same time, you know, you also have to think, well, you know, maybe these guys do know do know who Paul Allen is, and maybe he's actually not dead. Like who's right. who's to say? It is because of this that you can't you can't really know because we don't see Paul Allen. Um, we only hear right. about it through secondhand sources later on. So, I think the wow. one I'm I'm kind of like I like the ambiguity. I think that it's more obvious in the book that he kills the two prostitutes. You know that he videotapes. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> like that's when he has like the threesome or whatever. Um, I, there's a couple threesomes in the book. Um, but you know, when he goes back to the apartment and he's wearing like the, uh, um, yep. the, the mask, uh, I think oh. it's more, it, it's made a little bit more clear in the book that those murders were real. At least it feels that way. Um, and then I think that the homeless, I think that the homeless guy is definitely a real murder just because like murdering some black homeless guy in an alleyway in 19... 19- 88 um new york city like no one's gonna investigate that yeah you know Mm -hmm. like especially like and no one's gonna think some wall street guy did it like they would think it was some like mugger some kind of low life yep that's what Mm -hmm. just happens to to guys like this and that's really about it so i think that that definitely happened um but some of the other things i'm not quite like there are some others that i'm pretty sure like didn't happen like the kid at the zoo i'm pretty sure like was completely a fantasy or like in the movie him with the chainsaw you know throwing that down the stairs i think that's completely a fantasy i think that you know the feed me a stray cat <laughs> the sequence that in, in, in have you ever followed here's the thing right that like i don't connect with what, what, what like the thing is like maybe brett easton is just didn't like have any like oh i this like the strict criteria maybe it didn't matter maybe like to him it doesn't it doesn't matter if he did it or not as far as like what i've heard about him in interviews where he says like he wanted it to exist in that ambiguity because he didn't want people thinking about what was real and what was not and because if you know what's real and what's not 100 percent, then you're not really in patrick bateman's head you know that like part of it was getting right, you into right. that mindset yep. and keep mm. keeping things a bit unclear keeps you in that kind of that tension that he creates and, and that's created in the movie like there are things you know you look back on and i say that obviously didn't happen like ch- throwing the chainsaw down the stairs or you know shooting the the car and having it blow up but then there are other things that you're like you know what maybe that did happen that's and, cool. you know, the Paul Allen thing, the homeless thing, even the model thing, like it, it's more implied. Um, it's off screen, but cutting the model's head off. But it's like, how many models are there in New York when mo- one model goes missing, like in late 80s New York? You know, probably there's just a lot of people that probably think she's on some like Coke binge or something, you know, or she just decided to go back home or something. And like, it's kind of a very it's, you know, it's kind of a world where people don't really care about other people. So, you know, they probably wouldn't even look into it. And he met her. Guess what, yeah. yeah. I guess what I'm, like, questioning is, like, the impulse to, like, um, be, like, try to, like, make a criteria for it, right? And be like, oh, yeah, this is what he's saying, right? Yeah. Like, you're I, talking I th- about, like, um, like the, like the, the very, like, kind of rigid. Um, like, um, the people so, like, who are so, trying to, I like, mean, unearth. Was- some hidden yeah. meaning. So, Brett Eastman, just... do you think that he actually 
wrote on paper exactly what happened in this column and exactly what happened in this no, column. He did then, no, or no, absolutely in this not. Column, and then absolutely stuck not to that because and then like, because or, if he did that, if he yeah. did that, there like it would be really easy to identify what's real and what's not. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like that to me. That's that's all that matters. It's like I think an artist can just skip to just fucking, you know, I'm not going to do all that bullshit. Like, I'm going to write this from the perspective of Patrick Bateman, and you can fucking believe what you want. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Patrick Bateman believes it all. That, and, and that's so, the but thing. Would you be disappointed right. if you go to Brett Easton Ellis and ask him about, like, some obscure, like, obscure thing in uh, American Psycho? No. Like, would you be disappointed if he didn't have an answer? No, 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 no. No, okay. also, also, I'm, disappointed. No, I'm, I'm on board I'm, with I'm, you I'm there. Disappointed. Yeah. I'm disappointed when they have an answer, usually speaking, when oh, a lot of this stuff comes up. Like, I don't even it's want to too know the answer. It's like, it's like, dude, I don't like, I don't I like, want to know an answer. I, you know, one of my favorite interview answers was David Lynch, and this guy was like, so, uh, what are like, what are the themes of Mulholland Drive? And David Lynch is like, I don't talk about don't themes, like that, Johnny. <laughs> so he was just like he's like i'm not answering that wow. or like or the other one was like i think eraserhead is my most spiritual movie uh elaborate on that no <laughs> like, i don't I saw, like either of those movies especially mulholland drive oh, i love stand both it. of them really and it yeah i don't like it it's dude so i saw i saw a david dumb. lynch clip where he's talking about like it's like um it's following it's like a documentary following him making inland empire yeah and yeah. he and there's a scene where he looks to his production assistant and he goes i need a japanese girl <laughs> uh twins siamese twins in <laughs> polka dot outfits and they're miss both of them are missing arms <laughs> Thank god <laughs> that's wild <laughs> <laughs> That's David Lynch I like, for you. I, I like Blue Velvet. I will say. Oh, I love that's Blue a week, Velvet. That's that's one of my. That's probably my favorite David Lynch thing I've ever. And the rest of it, not a fan. Honestly, I'm not a fan of David I'm Lynch. A, I don't I'm know why. A, I'm a huge Lynch guy. But anyways, <laughs> let's start wrapping this up. So, uh, so we okay. talked about you know, um, body double. We talked about uh, whether or not we think he did it. Is there anything else that you know you guys think we might be missing that uh, might want to put in? I mean, I, I think we uh, hit. I, th I mean, Tom I, Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, we talked about shout outs. Tom shout Cruise. Out to is, Tom Jared, Cruise. is that Jared Leto's best performance? <laughs> no, he. You know, Jared Leto. Jared Leto also think, gets is pretty good in Fight Club. He also gets the shit kicked out of him in Fight Club. I think <laughs> that, about here's that. I here's that. here's my um, hot take. Jared Leto <laughs> is pretty talented. Yeah. I'm Man. I'm I'm kind of like I, I don't really care about Jared Leto. I'm not as much a Jared Leto hater as like other people. Um, the dude can act, and then he yeah, can he's just but but I will say this is he that comes back, he comes back after a after a, a a cult after some sort of getaway in the middle of Africa or something, doing some kind of like you know the millionaire what the millionaires do with they go away and they do meditation, and then he comes back. Jared and goes, Leto, hey. he, oh, he no. goes, hey, it's COVID. I never heard of COVID. It's like in the middle of the COVID pandemic, he comes back. He's never heard of it. Uh, that guy's a pretentious fucking dumbass. Based. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's I, kind I, of based. I, I, <laughs> I wish it was based. No, I don't it know. Is. Jared Leto, <laughs> most based person in the universe. <laughs> All right. Kino cast certified Jared Leto. Yeah. If you say the word base, then it's certified. I don't give. I get. I disagree. I don't know. Jared what Leto is. on a tier list above Stanley Kubrick. Oh my god. Stanley Kubrick's maybe like a B. Jared Leto is definitely an S. Yeah, we're going there. We're going there. Hey, he's Paul Allen. Gotta be based. Yeah, he's Paul Allen. Look, he's like better than everybody else. He's Paul Allen. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get a reservation at Dorothea. You anyways, stupid motherfucker. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> guys, um, I am cutting. I'm cutting it off here because I still have to finish my video on American Psycho. So um, I'm trying to finish that tonight. Uh, you know. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what that means, but um, thank you. 
And uh, <laughs> so anyways, guys, uh, thanks for coming on. And hopefully this is coming out on Christmas. So if you guys have anything to plug, uh, plug it right here. Uh, I, I just got a YouTube channel, Lofty Pixels, hello FTI. And I just do a weekly stream. I got a, a bunch of movie content. If you guys like movies, I got a bunch of stuff lined up. I do tier lists and all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah. And you, Oki? You got anything um, new you're working on? Y- Oki's Weird Stories, best uh, YouTube channel ever. <laughs> um, well, I got a video about <laughs> a, a guy, a director who's making a kid's movie about dolphins. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Is it better than? Larson's YouTube channel. That's that's the question. It's the best. It's, 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, Pretty guys, hard. check out my channel. I'm literally the only Kino YouTuber. Um, there's no mm-hmm. other. Uh, the The Kino community on on YouTube is very small. <laughs> it's, it's me. <laughs> I'm the only person in my community, which is the best way to be. <laughs> um, and yeah. So if you found a, I highly doubt that anybody found this video on its own i i bet that anyone who's watching this video has seen my american psycho video so there's no point in plugging um but i'm going to be releasing this on christmas so also everyone merry christmas except to oki because he's uh from a muslim family Um, no uh, merry christmas (laughs) to everybody Um, i'm just kidding (laughs) love the holiday spirit Merry Christmas. Uh, Hope you guys have a nice time. Spend some good time you with your should, family. Eat some good you food. You should all revert to Islam. <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna no, have to put a cap on no, that. My hero. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, you Mel know Gibson what? Is, Islam is the only true religion.